Now, in this day and age, there are certain things that are happening around this world, and usually, when it comes to a segment like this, which could have been happening last year, usually I do not include political figures and, well, army militant groups. Now, since October 7th in the music festival, Hamas has taken into account to kill 1,200 Israelis and foreign nationals. And they also have taken 248 as a hostage during the initial attack on Israel. On October 21st, Hamas released two hostages that they captured. A mother named Judith and daughter Natalie ran. On November 24th, Hamas released 24 hostages. That includes 13 Israelis, 10 Thais, and 1 Filipino. Hamas then released on the on November 25th, 13 Israeli hostages and four Thai nationals. Then on November 26th, Hamas released 17 hostages. That includes 14 Israelis and three Thai nationals. Then on November 27th, Hamas released 11 Israeli hostages and 10 Israeli hostages were released with a pet dog and two thighs by Hamas on November 28th. Hamas then released 16 hostages on November 29th. Hamas released 8 hostages on November 30th. On October 11th, Israeli airplanes attacked and destroyed several buildings in and around the Islamic University of Gaza. And then Israeli forces bombed the Gaza-Egypt route for crossing. October 12th. Israel announced that Gaza would not receive water, fuel, or electricity until hostages were free. October 13th, the IDF launched localized raids on Hamas cells. Israel forces conducted a raid into Khan units to locate hostages held by Hamas and target terrorist infrastructure. They were engaged by Hamas's Bonson Brigade, which reported destroying bulldozers and a tank. The idea reported one soldier was killed and three injured by an anti tank missile. And that was October 22nd. On October 27th, Israel conducted a heavy round of airstrikes and said, that it was expanding its ground forces in besieged Gaza, which made Gaza suffer a complete communications blackout. And it was nearly impossible for people to call or receive emergency services. On October 28th, Israel began 
an invasion of the Gaza Strip, launching a large-scale ground assault on the towns of Yet Hanun and Buri. October 31st, Israel forces strike the Jabala refugee camp. November 1st, the IDF attacks the Jabala refugee camp in the Gaza Strip, leading to massive casualties. IDF, and then the IDF aired strikes interrupted prayers at the Holy Family Church in Gaza. On November 2nd, the IDF bombed the surroundings of the Al Quds Hospital in Gaza. The IDF attacked an ambulance column and the main gates of the Al Shifa Hospital. On November 3rd, the IDF striked Osama bin Said School. On November 4th, the IDF bombed the Al Maghazi refugee camp in the central Gaza Strip with an airstrike, killing at least 40 civilians. November 9th, an Israeli army airstrike bombed. Al Barak School on Abidi Street in the Al Nasser neighborhood north of Gaza City. The IDA, the IDF strikes the street just outside of Gaza's Indonesian hospital. November 14th, the IDF raided Al Shifa Hospital and interrogated patients and medical staff. The IDF opened two humanitarian corridors leading to Salah, Salah Al Din Street, where civilians fit, in fact, would over in Gaza, even though they probably did not. November 18th, the IDF dropped leaflets in the south of the Gaza Strip, ordering people to evacuate. How's that working out for the IDF? On November 24th, two Palestinians were fatally shot and 11 were wounded by Israeli soldiers as they attempted to move back into Norfolk, Gaza. The 71st IDF resumed combat operations after, after the seven day ceasefire had ended. An IDF airstrike destroyed a large building in Kanus. The Gas Health Ministry claimed that over 180 people were killed since the truce ended. And that is a sad thing. The record shows that I read from Wikipedia which has all the lists on their website on how it went down. Both parties are at fault, even if one is doing the most. Both parties are still at fault. And both in my opinion, should de deserve a fine for breaking an international law. And each of them do deserve one. One for killing, one deserves one from killing civilians in Palestine and London deserves it for kidnapping Israel innocent Israeli citizens and American Israelis visiting Israel as well as kidnapping Thai citizens who were visiting Israel too.
and I killed that both armies deserve a call on their stocky. But do not take my word for it. Oh, 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 I'm Santa Claus, and I'm just here to tell you this. The children of Palestine do not deserve this. The IEF gets a coal on your stocking. And the children of Israel do not deserve this. Hamas gets a call on their stocking. No militant army gets a present this year until they change their ways. Well, I gotta go. There's only 16 days left till Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. And happy holidays. At the end of the day, there's really no point of continuing this war. I pray that one day that this war ends and that both parties will be punished. Both army groups are dumbasses for continuing to fight to the death. Even, especially if the one if the one army mounting group has pledged first to reignite this war. Also doesn't mean that the other one should continue the same path and fight against the IDF for self-defense when they in fact don't really care about their own civilians too. Just as much as the IDF doesn't care about their own civilians that they killed. And that's why I don't trust Hamas and the IDF. Both of them are bad and both of them should be punished for good.